Now let's talk about the performance of AWS DynamoDB tables. So when you're actually leveraging DynamoDB, right, within your infrastructure or architecture, you should be asking yourself, how do you improve the performance of your DynamoDB queries? So in order to do that, right, first, you need to understand the nature of DynamoDB partitioning and throughput allocation. You would also choose, for example, primary keys that would provide you and even distribution, right, of storage and request loads because DynamoDB is a distributed system and your keys, very much like S3, for example, will be distributed across the number of partitions. And what you want to avoid is any one partition being responsible for, you know, you know, the majority of any more storage, right, or requests than other partitions because that would be, you know, a hot partition and that will lead to performance issues or degradation. You would also leverage, for example, both local and global secondary indexes. And then finally, you would use the query versus the scan operation, right? So remember that DynamoDB is capable of single digit millisecond response time, but that's only when you use query operations rather than the scan operation. So as the name suggests, the scan means, right? It's a full table scan. It's you know, you'll not be able to get the absolute best performance by using the scan options or operation. You need to also remember, like I mentioned earlier, the tables are partitioned. So within DynamoDB, tables are partitioned according to the throughput capacity and the size of the data that you're actually storing. So when you look at DynamoDB, for example, how these tables are built and how they're partitioned, a single partition can handle about 3,000 read capacity units, 1,000 write capacity units, and up to 10 gigabytes worth of storage. So, for example, let's say a table requires 6,000 read capacity units, right? 400 write capacity units. And initially, or in the short or midterm at least, you're looking at about 5 gigs worth of storage. So, According to this particular scenario, you would calculate the number of partitions, right? And that would give you the ability to have the, you know, the capacity for the throughput capacity across partitions. So one partition can handle, you know, maybe 3,000 units. So you would have 6,000, let's say divided by 3,000, you know, so give you 2,000. And that will give you read write capacity units. One partition can handle 1,000 write capacity units and you only need 400, so that gives you about 0.4, right? So in terms of storage itself, you only need half a partition because there's no such thing as half a partition, right? So you need just a space, right? So a number of partitions will be the greater of those two numbers rounded up. So the greater of those two be, would be 2.4. If you round it up to three, so you need at least three partitions allocated to that table in order to meet the throughput demands that we're actually asking, right, talking about here. So you'll end up basically three partitions, as mentioned earlier, and your total throughput would be allocated evenly across those three partitions. So, for example, each partition would then, you know, be allocated or limited to 2,000 read capacity units and then 100, maybe 33 units write capacity units. So the thing to keep in mind here is that if any one partition, for example, goes beyond more than what it's allotted, then the throughput will be a problem. Even if your total throughput, for example, is lower than what you've actually provisioned. And any one partition going beyond its allotted throughput would result in throttle. And that's exactly what you want to avoid, right? Hot keys lead to, you know, hot partitions and hot partitions lead to problem issues, right? Degradation of performance itself. So just wanted to highlight in some of these important areas. So you as a solution architect need to be aware of these. Hope this helps. With this, let's move to the next lesson.